Michael Brantley in his debut, his second rehab assignment with the Sugarland Spacers. Brantley homered in that game yesterday. I texted Gerald. He said he, he had a uh, he had a line out to left field as well, said his plate appearances looked good. I asked him about his defense. Like, did he do anything out there defensively? So he had a couple of routine fly balls that, you know, nothing to really test him. Okay. The question, one thing that I did get encouraged by with the Brantley homer, like I see on Twitter, obviously, all of us, that he homered. My immediate thought was, okay, what was the pitch? Like, was that a cement mixer backed up changeup that he drove out of the park? Because that means nothing to me. If you, you hit a triple A, you know, hanging curveball for a homer over the right field wall, that means nothing to me. It was 93 and a half mile per hour fastball high and tight. So, like, that's encouraging that Brantley still has that in his bag. Now, I'm not going to lose my mind, but Michael Brantley's back because we see a lot of guys hit home runs in AAA that can never make it to the big league level. But it shows you that he's capable of doing it. And the fact that he's coming off the shoulder injury, the inflammation, that he's capable of doing it is encouraging. Yeah, mine was the front shoulder on it and the turn to take it hard down the line mm -hmm. as opposed to kind of getting the barrel out towards the front of the plate and trying to yeah. throw it in the alleys. Yeah, that was the biggest thing that I noticed. I'm other, not gonna, other than sprinkles and ice. Not gonna lose my mind about a triple A home run, but the fact that he's still capable of doing it lets our mind wander. But let's Franco. also break it down on the on the flip side. You'd rather have that than an 0 for three with three punch outs and and, and look like completely behind fastballs yeah. and chasing breaking Yeah, pitches. like you get that pitch on a three-ball count and you're like slapping it down the left field line. Okay, I'm worried if he's like, if the shoulder's not going to allow him. Or the timing's off and you're not yeah. catching up to a heater down the middle. Not going to overreact with him hitting a home run. But it shows that he's capable. It shows that he looks somewhat healthy. It wasn't a backup breaking ball. It wasn't a hanging curveball. It was a it was fastball high and tight, 93 miles per hour, and he pulled it, yanked it out the right field. It's encouraging. It's not to say that Michael Brantley is going to be Michael Brantley. It's not to say that Michael Brantley is going to pay huge dividends for the Houston Astros. It's encouraging. It shows that he still has it in the bag. It shows you that the shoulder's all right. Like, don't want to flip out about this. Don't want to lose my mind. But yesterday, Michael Brantley played baseball and hit a home run. That is the reality of the situation. Michael Brantley played in a baseball game and hit a home run in a baseball game. This is my public service reminder at this point in the conversation after all the sunshines and rainbows for the sprinkles and the icing. This has happened before where we've been through this. We've done this rodeo. We've danced down this this street. And, that, and then suddenly, let's right. just remember, right when you were entering the crosswalk with the green light to head on back to the major leagues, a truck ran you over and said, discomfort, shut him down, ain't happening. That's why I said after we passed the All-Star break and got by the midway point in the season, I am no longer talking about that man and using his name whenever I can yep. until I see him in a major league uniform. It's great. It's progress. Again, it's the things you want to hear about. Again, but he's not there yet. So good start to another stint in another rehab. But I'm not holding my breath or getting my getting excited about this one. And you, and you shouldn't. Like it's fair to. Well, I mean, I mean, I think it's fair to to allow yourself to be optimistic. But you're calling it like it is. You're being very factual and truthful, because Michael Brantley is. That was day one of his second rehab assignment in the minors this year. He already went through a rehab assignment earlier this year. He got called up to triple to to the Astros to meet him in Seattle, and his shoulder was inflamed. So like that's the reality of the situation. Reality is situation. Yesterday he played in a rehab game for you know, the first time for the game one and rehab assignment two. So I think it's fair to allow yourself to like be optimistic, but it, you also need to have in the back of your mind, this is his second rehab assignment. He completed it, his first one and then didn't make it to the club. It's optimistic versus realistic. I, I love the fact that we can all have optimism. I had that the last time we went through this. So this time I'm just trying to be realistic and say, hey, look, I'm focused on the roster that's currently playing Major League Baseball and the guys that you have to call on on a daily basis. And if the sprinkles and icing on the top – come with it later in the season where you can actually add him to the lineup or add him to the bench and he can provide some kind of a spark or offensive upgrade. Perfect. But that's why I'm going to be realistic instead of optimistic this time around because we've been through this before. Now, let's allow ourselves to be optimistic. Allow ourselves to be optimistic for a second. In a perfect world, optimism, how quickly is Brantley up with the Astros? Early next week. Okay. I asked Gerald about that too. He said he said he thinks he makes the Astros this weekend. No, he said this homestand. He said Monday. 
So it's kind that's of what, what you're saying. That's what I'm saying. Monday like, or Tuesday. If you're going to give me perfect world, complete optimism, perfect world, complete optimism, he plays again today with the Spacers. He's fine. He's good. He's two for three with a couple of doubles. There's no inflammation. And he joins the team whenever they come back home on Friday, if you're giving me complete optimism. Quite frankly, I'll take Michael Brantley after one or two games, hitting a home run over David Hinsley yeah, on this team. He plays tonight. Tomorrow's an off day for the Astros in the lineup on Friday. There we go. Complete optimism. Let's the go. super homer, completely optimistic, perfect. Of- world again and that's why i'm realistic but because i thought immediately coming home it just it, there's a chance that he could he could suit up this weekend yeah. and then i could use his name again on monday <laughs> uh one interesting thing about this too is that um what what would uh, there's two things i want to go here a lot of people are saying move him to first base i heard dana brown on the flagship earlier today he thinks he's primarily going to be left field dh I would like to see him at first base because it gives you some options there. Sure like it gives you some options on what you want to do, Here's like depending thing. on your pitcher, depending on who you're facing, depending on the ballpark. So I, I like the f- positional flexibility. So I wish that Brantley can at least do it. I would put Joe, I, I would put Joe Espada to a little extra work, and every night, every day in in, in pregame BP, I, I'd have Joe still working on first base with both guys. I'd have Brantley and Yiner getting reps, just because. Just because injuries happen, just because you want op- every option on the table you could possibly use, whether it be for the playoffs or the regular season, and and the best lineups out there, I would I would have Joe Espada the same way he works extra time with all the infielders and they rave about him. I'd have Joe working with both those guys. Cool, I'm in. I, I think, I'm in I think on he that. should because he he will this la- the last go round that we got excited about, he was having some he was doing some time at first base with the with Sugarland. So I, I think he needs to continue that. Yeah, especially if Abreu is not going to come back. Even if he is going to come back, he's a better you really option think against that's righties. Realistic? It's a back. Backs feel like just such a wild card to me. But even I, I, Carlos Cray is on line one. Look, I think that I think it is in play. I think it is in play that he could miss the rest of the season. It doesn't seem like that's the case. Like hoping he doesn't have a tri- uh, stint on the IL. Just had an injection. They're calling it mild. I, I think he'll be back. Uh, I do think it's plausible he doesn't. But even if he is back. Brayu starts against lefties. Brantley starts against righties at first base. There's your platoon. Or, you know, Yanner Diaz over there. <laughs> I love this. His lineup's got a lot of pop I'll in I'll always it. throw that in there. Uh, 6630, let's assume Brantley comes back to the big league squad healthy and good to go. What role does he play on the team at this point? Where can you slot him in? Well, we just started talking about it. I mean, I, I think that it depends on what versatility he brings to the table. You can only slot him in in two positions unless he learns another one. So it's DH and it's left field. If he starts getting some reps at first base and you feel comfortable with that, there's another option for you. Otherwise, he's a pinch hitter off the bench as well. And those basically narrow it down. I think that uh, I think you're mostly going to see him left field DH. I would love to see him at first. I don't think it happens. Look, you don't need Michael Brantley to be fantastic. If first base is an option, you're just hoping that he can be better against righties than Jose Abreu or John Singleton. If he's going to play only left field DH, probably that probably is the case, then he needs to be a better bat than Jake Myers, right? Like you're probably looking at a say, Jake Myers, Michael Brantley platoon situation where Jake Myers is getting starts against lefties. Michael Brantley's getting starts against righties whenever you don't need Myers defense. I think that's the role he that he plays. He climbs the pecking order though, right? I mean, you look at it and say if he's healthy, he he's better than Kessinger. He, he's better than guys coming off the bench that you can use from a bat Sure, I think you have to have Kessinger up though because of you need infielders, Angelus, especially if right. Drew Bonds in the lineup. But right now, David Hensley's on the active roster. David Hensley's currently on the active he's roster, just, as with Greg Kessinger. Yeah, he's just filling a role right now. Yeah, it's a body. He's a so, warm body. Yeah, exactly. So you're going to have a roster spot for him. It's just the pecking order of where you, where and how you use Brantley depends on he's you know if he's still a better hitter, and he should be a better hitter than most of the guys you have on your bench that you could possibly plug and play, then Chas could be your center fielder, and Sprinkles and, and, uh, and uh, Icing can be in left field sometimes. And, and if not... Then he can DH, but that's when Yiner's behind the plate. Because again, I'm not taking Yiner out of the lineup right now, and I don't care what Sprinkles and Icing did last night yet. If he can show me that he can be consistent like the hitter he was previously and hover around 300, I don't need the pop. But I still do, that does still doesn't preclude me from taking Yiner and putting him out of the line. I need Yiner still in the lineup. I treat I tweeted this at uh, yesterday at Jeremy Brenham. I just want to see one time this year. One time this year. I don't even see it on a regular basis. If I see this lineup one time, I'm not even talking batting order. Batting order, I think, is overrated. I'm not going to lose my mind about batting order. But if we see a lineup, I'm not going batting order, just lineup, once, once this season, I just want to see it once. 
Yiner's your catcher. I don't even care who plays first base. Altuve's at second. Bregman's at third. Peña's at short. Brantley, Jordan, and left. Chaz in center. Tucker in right. Brantley, Jordan, and DH. I want to see that configuration one time this season. That has to be like... Is the, that too much to ask? That has to one be time. like your sudden death lineup. That's your death lineup. That is your sudden death lineup. That is the best possible offensive lineup, Just want to see lineup it you could put. I would love it. I only want to see it once. I don't, because if it works, I want to see it every night. <laughs> 